Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Shadowrun Dragonfall. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he shows to join me today here in the Cruise Bazaar as uh, we explore our haven, our safe haven. I wonder if it's the first time my character is here. You step inside, and the squalor of the disused U-Bahn tunnels gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim, fluorescent lighting. Something bad has happened, hasn't it? He steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, light glinting off of steel-rimmed glasses. Paul Ar Amsel. Amsel? Amsel, maybe. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord. Part deal maker, part information broker, one of the most well connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team as he takes it all in. The grim faces, the hard stares, Igir's fury, Monica's absence. I had a feeling. How did she? His face has gone ashen. He swallows, takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Um. The run was a setup. One minute she was cracking the safe, the next she was on the ground screaming. I've seen Monica hit Black IC before. This... Uh, this was something worse. Glory nods, her motions robotic and spare. Monica died of a biofeedback-induced stroke. That's right. Iger thrusts a gloved finger into her chest. And this idiot stood by and let it happen. Uh... I assume... He no, 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 not her chest. Into my chest! She's accusing me. Uh, now, we haven't had a chat with her yet. Uh, so, I will try to not uh, anger her too much. Let's see. I can brush her finger aside. Wait. Oh, yeah, she has a... It, it's a it's a gloved finger. Which, uh, for some reason, I thought it was the whole hand. Um, I can ignore her, that's interesting. Or I can say nothing. I really need to talk to her though, but uh, let's ignore her. Let it happen? She jacked in, she screamed, and she seized. By the time we saw she was in trouble, it was already too late. Yeah, because you never bothered learning what to look for. Muscle contractions and micro tremor tremors are good indicators of a decker in distress. I'm assuming you didn't have anyone keeping an eye out for those? No, if you had, my friend wouldn't be lying dead in a basement. Oh, shove off, Iger. We were all on the lookout for physical security, Edie included. Throwing him under the bus isn't going to help anything. Under a bus is exactly where he belongs. Iger turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica was good. She was the best, right? She was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough, and you're gonna get burned. Iger turns her focus back to you. If you'd been paying attention, you'd have figured all out, uh, all of this out by on your own by now. You've, you, oh my God, that is all one word. That I mean, it's speech, so it's correct. But anyway, you'd have known that um, Monica needed watching as much as that door. Enough, Iger. Amzel's voice is hoarse, his expression blank. Enough. Iger pushes ahead, he heedless of the interruption. Her voice remains measured, but there's fire in her eyes. How many seconds pass between Monica's first convulsion and her plug getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage biofeedback can do to a Decker's brain in five seconds? Iger, I don't... You don't have to answer that. Of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is your f f That is enough, Paul Amsel says. His voice comes out in a roar. I'm not gonna... I'm obviously not voice acting him in that way, so no roar for him. And uh, so it's gonna be a very different kind of impression that he's gonna make. Not necessarily a different kind of character, but it's just a different kind of uh, impression. It's more of a... Uh, that old dude from the Ninja Turtles thingy that I... I think I've watched... Some episodes of the anime of Ninja Turtles, but not the movie, so I wouldn't even know that. And it's been many, many years, so I, that's the closest reference to what I'm going for him. And his fist smashes down on the desk behind him. Iger, you and Edie can have it out later. But I have had enough. 
We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he led us to believe. I want to know why. Right there with you, this was supposed to be a milk run. Payback is the only reason why we need him. We saw something back there, something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we're all still in danger. He pauses. Paul does. Rubs his temples. Agreed. And to neutralize that danger, we need to know who we are dealing with. Let us review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. Uh, yeah, well, that is very important, and I don't know if this is an option, but I'm gonna go right at that, because I think that's the most important one. My character is also knowledgeable enough to remember what the heck she said, because I can't even read that. I th that honestly looks like she's just... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's probably very insensitive if, you, if that is a, an actual German, German word. But I can't, like... F I mean, I suppose it's the fewer Schwinga, but if it's German, it's to be Schwinger? Schwinga. Schwinga? How do you... Yeah, Schwinga, right? Fewer Schwinga. Maybe. Let me know in the comments. She fought hard to tell us. It must be important. Hamzel seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment before responding. The fire wing. Oh, it's fewer sh vinga, I suppose. See, I can't even tell what syllables are what. Because <laughs> English and Germanic languages in general are weird in the syllabic distinction. Anyway, this is unexpected. You'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. Gloria raises an eyebrow. The fire wing? The most terrible of the great dragons. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about what, like, in between episodes, I was thinking about what I said in the very first episode um, about this setting having dragons, like real dragons. And then I was thinking about that because I think about my episodes when I am done with them. Um, and, uh, and also, I think about the games when I'm not playing them, because, you know, good games do that to you. But I was thinking specifically about what I said, and then I realized, wait a minute, that's the name of the game. So we're going to kill this dragon. Or maybe we're going to get killed by the dragon. Because that wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me, honestly. And I, I actually, I think... Uh, it's, there's, there's some, it might be not possible to kill a dragon, so we might just be... Might just want to steal the one ring or something like Frodo did. Although they did end up killing... I don't know. Anyway. Um, he says... There are those who would disagree, but they never experienced the terror of leaving under her shadow. He glances at Glory. You are far too young to remember her, of course. But for Germans of my generation, the name Führerschwinger is synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragons of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Führerschwinger was not... After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage that claimed tens of thousands of lives. Amzal takes a deep breath, slowly releases it, and there is a haunted look in his eyes. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children were slaughtered, roasted alive in their homes by a creature of legend. No hope for salvation and no end in sight. It was a horror that you cannot begin to understand. Tens of thousands dead. And that is a horror that you cannot begin to... I mean, being burned alive is pretty horrific. Um, hmm. I'm, th I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it because, well, recent events at the time of recording uh, have uh, sort of cast some perspective into what uh, hundreds, and th hundreds and hundreds of thousands of deaths, uh, maybe not localized though, but still, definitely tens of thousands of deaths localized, uh, what it actually... Um, what kind of terror it inspires in people. But maybe not a dragonfly. It's not the same thing, is it? I don't know. It's still pretty horrible, deaths. You, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, and you are not watching this as the episodes go out, um, well, if you are watching this in 2020, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but if not, then it's 2020 right now. Uh, because these videos stay up for many, many, uh, many years, hopefully. And hopefully for a long time people watch them. Uh, but anyway, uh, Galari is saying, What stopped her? I can't im- uh, Oh, that's Glory. Sorry. What stopped her? I can't imagine that a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. 
Eventually, the fire wing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course. But it was experimental weapons designed by Dr. Vauclair that finally pierced her hide. She fell in a hail of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the SOX. This event was called the Dragonfall. Oh! Maybe we're not gonna kill a dragon. Maybe it's already dead. What? Wait a minute. Maybe we're gonna need to kill this dragon again. Hmm. Safe at last from the dragon's wrath, Germany celebrated Vauclair as a hero. Our own Siegfried, a modern day da dragon slayer. My own family practically worshipped the man. If the Dragonfall was as important an event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised that I've never heard of it. Those early years of the Awakening were traumatic, Iger. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world, a new source of terror for a bewildered public, and in 2021, the sudden emergence of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such turmoil, it is, is it any surprise that Dr. Vauclair and the Firewing were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. He rubs his temple. temples. Again, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Fauerstringa is a, or however you pronounce that, um, is a bit of a historical trivia and nothing more. All right, so Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long dead dragon. Eigel sweeps her eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight, and finally she gives up. Any ideas as to why? Amzel's voice trembles with frustration. No, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The Dragonfall is ancient history. Fauerschwinga has been dead and long and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing that I do know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. He visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath, and then slowly releases it. I will look into this, and I will find answers. In the meantime, did you turn up anything else of value? Uh, yeah, the estate was just a front for whatever was going on in the basement. Hmm, that much is clear. It wasn't a minor enterprise either. That facility took serious funds to build. And time, says Glory. There was more to it than we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret, the owners, whoever they may be, were none too pleased by your escape, I'm sure. What else did you find? Uh, after everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. He appeared to be the head of security, says Glory. Uh, it's not much to go on. Do any details about this orc come to mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? He was an older guy, for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late forties, pretty old for an orc. And he'd had skin grafts, says Glory. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. That is something. I will see what I can find out. Did you note anything else during the run that may be of value? Uh, well, apart from that vase that we never got. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, that's not much, says Iger. Amzel nods. His face is drawn and haggard. It is thin, I agree. A basement, a middle-aged orc with skin grafts, and a long-forgotten world event. Um, you haven't said a thing about our client yet, Paul. You holding out on us? Amzel shakes his head wearily. No, Edie. I'm not holding out. I'm tired, and I'm frustrated, and I already miss Monica. He takes a moment. I did not think to mention our employer because I did not set up the job. Monica did. His face reddens. I, I warned her. I told her not to take this run, but she assured me it would be a cakewalk. Monica was approached recently by a man who calls himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F-State political scene. I never much liked the man, and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica, she would do anything for her cause. Anything for the Flux State. <sighs> Winters swore that the data was uh, he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the Flux. And that was all it took. The Flux here being Berlin that we're in? I actually don't know what a flux state even is. Maybe we're going to learn that. Well, it sounds like uh, Green Winters is our best lead, then. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winters has involved us in something much larger than he led Monica to believe. 
When he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably gonna rab it. We need to chase him down before that happens. Yeah, so we need information on Green Winters and we need it fast. There is a man here in the Cruise Bazaar, a Turk named Altug Buragazi. He owns a little soy calf shop just down the way called Cafe Kezve. This man is also a purveyor of information. I have done business with him from time to time. And you think he would know any uh, something about the Green Winters? Or about Green Winters? Amzel nods. When I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Winters, I contacted Altug. One of his people has been uh, keeping tabs on Winters ever since. As I said, I did not trust the men. Uh, for good reason, it would seem. I'll talk to Altug and see what he knows about Green Winters. Very well. Tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you have uncovered already, sparse though it may be. And I gain five karma, which is good, because we might need uh, to know things. So I need to meet Altug Burakazi. And I'm going to talk to Paulo again. Iri, Amzel, peer, well, I guess he doesn't go by Paul, he goes by, by his surname. Amzel peers at you appreh apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get information about Green Winters? Nope, not yet. Then please continue working. We need to find that man. I'm sure we do. But we also need to talk to everyone here. Dietrich. Dietrich turns his head at your approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars. The legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the, sham the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all of this, there is still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Eddie, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps that needs sharing, and I've got a fallen comrade to drink to. Uh, so I can I'm, I can refuse or can take the bottle. I have no reason to believe that he wants me ill, so I, refusing would be purely on the grounds of me not drinking. I'm gonna take the bottle. You go ahead and toast Monica. I'm drinking to revenge. As good a cause as any, I suppose, he shrugs. Drink away, then. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear, and as you raise it to catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel, it tastes of sweet corn and walnuts. Oh, right, and as... Uh, right, the lack of coma. I misread this. <laughs> uh, lack of coma threw me off. So as you raise it, you ca catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts with a lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig and then return the bottle to Dietrich, uh, Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a, a, a long pull on the bottle and then locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Edie. What, makes you what made you choose to come to Berlin? Nothing in particular. He rolls his eyes at you. Oh, come on, boss. You're going to have to do better than that. Monica told me that you had made a name for yourself in the Megaplex. Had you had your own team and everything. Leads a man to wonder why you packed up and moved here. Wait a minute. Is Monica from the first game? I played the first game. I don't remember Monica from the first game. Because uh, I played it a little bit. Like, probably ten hours. Enough to uh, see myself stumped by the combat. Because I was even worse than I am right now. Uh, and then I never really... Went back to it. Um, and I don't remember the characters. But if you told me that Monica was in the first game, then I would believe you, honestly. This might be a spoiler as well, if that is the case. A member of my old crew betrayed me. Ain't that a pisser? I can handle all sorts of things, but betrayal always makes me see red. Right there with you. I ventilated the son of a bitch before I left the Ruch, Ruch, Ruchplex. He said Megaplex, and this is different. I I wonder where that is. I think the first game takes place in the U.S. It's in one, it's, it's in one of the cities of the U.S., I think. Dietrich raises the bottle in salute and then takes another swig. That The bastard deserved no less. In your position, I'd have done the same thing. 
So after all of this went down, you decided to bail out on the Ruhrplex and head to Berlin? Am I getting that right? Yeah, more or less. There wasn't much left for me in the Ruhrplex, and Monica made me a hell of an offer. Ah, yes, Monica. Dietrich raises his bottle again and then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After the moment has passed, he returns his attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me, t let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know that you two knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Why do you want to know? Monica was my friend. I cared about her. He shrugs. I don't know. I guess that I just want to get to know her better. There were some areas of her life that have always been a mystery, and if you could shed any light on them, I'd appreciate it. I can respect that. So, what was the deal between the two of you? Don't leave me in suspense. Uh, we were friends. Right there with you. And privileged to say so. She was one of the best women I've, no I've ever known. Anyway, I've, te I've taken enough of your time and the bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you're here with us. He takes a final pull on the bottle and then tips it forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. So the way this game is structured is, generally speaking, you go um, in runs. Uh, but in between runs, you have to talk to your friends and or your, your companions. And also we have a doggo. And uh, if you don't do that, basically you miss out on all their storyline. Or not all their storyline, on just the storyline that... Because uh, <laughs> it's, it's all... Basically, I think you cannot talk to them once in uh, in Hong Kong. If you don't talk to them once, it's okay, because you have enough intervals between the missions to talk to get all the dialogues. But if I talk to him again, he's not going to say another long dialogue like he did just then. I've, gonna, I've got nothing more to say, boss. Just Let's just get this run taken care of. You can hit me again later if you want to talk. Yep, that's basically how it goes. And we have Dante over here. As you start toward the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate, indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. Ah, shit. Dante. Dietrich shakes his head. Don't worry, boy. We'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Amzel's eyes well up. He inhales but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown howl. Wouldn't stop. Kept. He closed his eyes. Well, that's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down into those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. And I can grab Monica's bag of soy jerky treats off the table and give him one. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Dante takes the treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks mournfully, pre looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your legs. I guess the dog is going with you, Edie. Amdol takes a dragged breath and releases it, and then a slow me melancholy... S oh no, it's another one of the... Why do people keep doing this? What plague has befallen the English-speaking speaking word that they confuse the word melancholic with the word melancholy? It's not even pronounced the same. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of people make this mistake, and I just find it super weird, because for me, it, I, I specifically have the advantage of speaking uh, a language that has a very, well, two very similar words, and I, there's, there's no Portuguese person that confuses melancholia with melancolico, which is the translation for melancholy and uh, melancholic, um, how do you, am I mispronouncing it again? Anyway, the point is, mel melancholy is a noun, Melancholic is an adjective. And I may, may not know about pronunciations. I'm not, I may not even know if I'm pronouncing adjective pr properly because it's all weird. It's an adjective? I, what do you mean? I don't... It's The point is... That's a typo. Let's just go with a typo. But I'm pretty sure it's just... It's like the people who say pamphlet instead of pamphlet. It's like, why would you... It's a PH! It's a PH! Why, why? Although, to be fair, English has a lot of, ex uh, of exceptions. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's places where a PH is read P instead of F. But anyway, the, let's just get back to the dog, because the dog is sad, and so is Paul. Then, oh, or everybody, really. Amzol takes a racked breath and releases it, and then a slow, melancholic smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altug. 
mein Freund. Freund? 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 I probably should learn how to speak these words. Capital F, because in German, nouns are capitalized. I know that bit. With a little luck, he can help us locate Green Winters, and we can get back to the bo uh, get to the bottom of this. Paul stares at the floor, and now I think we should all take a moment. He li his lips tighten for Monica. Yep, and for the end of the episode as well, because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Shadowrun Dragonfall. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.